got a new machine and I gotta admit, it scares me a little bit. Welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. So in front of me is a 48 inch finger press brake or pan box brake. Everybody kind of calls it something different. Matters what part of the country you're in. And this is a Whitney Jensen and it does 14 gauge steel. And I have to say, it scared me the first time I operated it when I was testing it when I purchased it because it is pneumatically driven. If you've never worked with pneumatics, they are fast, especially um, on this machine. Now you can turn them down and adjust them, but the first time I used them, they weren't adjusted. And actually right now, they could still need some tweaking. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to this machine before it's really, truly active here in the shop. And I wanna talk about it. I wanna give you a tour of it. So what makes this unique again is this pneumatics. It has a pneumatic clamping system and also the leaf that comes up bends it and that is hydraulically, I should say, pneumatically driven. If I mix those up, I apologize. Every time I say hydraulics, I actually mean pneumatics. Let's go over this a little bit. So like I said, the clamping system is unique because it comes from the bottom instead of this top leaf or upper beam coming down. What Whitney Jensen says, because it comes up parallel, never moves your piece and makes for a more consistent and accurate system. I don't know if that's true because there's just very little movement from the top coming down, but you know, we'll say that's cool. But what it also does is because this beam, and I use the word beam because that's the word Whitney Jensen uses, is I can adjust it up and down quite a bit. I can also move it in and out, making it very versatile. Also, like I said, this is a finger brake, so you can put fingers on it, and it's a very unique design because it's a dovetail system. So when you put the finger in, it goes in, hooks, and when you clamp down on this side, it clamps down, taking advantage of this angle, and pulls it all together just like it would on a dovetail. Now, what is also interesting is the fingers on it are around six inches. I think I could actually squeak it out to eight inches. And you guys are going, well, if you were to put a finger on there that sticks out six inches or eight inches, well, your bending point, you're missing the whole bending point. Well, that's what makes this a very unique machine because this whole beam, upper beam, has a set of screws on it and it pushes back up to eight inches. Now, the scale says six. I've moved it to seven and there is still another inch left over. And the advantage to that is, you know, when you're bending a box, what happens is you fold up the sides and then you put it in here and you need to fold up the end. Well, if the fingers are really short, well, you can only bend a box that's so deep. Well, this one here, theoretically, I could bend a box that has an eight inch side on it. So it makes it a very, very versatile machine. Drawbacks to long fingers, though, is you lose capacity. Like I said, this is a 14 gauge machine. I start putting really long fingers on here, well, it may reduce it down to more like an 18 gauge bend, but I don't have any of the fingers yet. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going to make them out of raw steel or actually build a pattern and have it cast out of cast steel or cast iron. I'm actually, to be honest, I'm not sure which is the better material. So if you think cast steel is better than cast iron or vice versa, Leave me a comment, because I know very little about casting, but I know enough to get myself in trouble. 
And if somebody can help prevent some of the headaches, I'd really love to hear from you. So again, we can clamp it up. Now, one thing people don't think about is pneumatics having a lot of clamping pressure. Well, I think that proves this has a lot of clamping pressure. I can't even move that piece of material. The other thing that makes this cool is the way this comes up. Let me clamp this up. And I've got this set at a pretty high pressure, and I'll show you why in a little bit. So some of the neat things is, is when the guy put the handle here, you think, well, how inconvenient is the handle there? And partially right, but he got this ball up here to where it's close to the pivoting point. So imagine if it was down here and I hit the lever. Well, I got to follow it up. We're here. My hand is so close to the pivoting point that it's not that difficult to operate. Also, when there's material in there, it slows it down quite a bit. So it's not as scary, but I'll tell you, the first time operating it is very, very scary. Because of the versatility of this machine and this beam being able to move back and the lower beam to adjust up and down, I can put different shaped dies in this. So what that means is nine, I'm not limited to just a sharp 90 degree bend. I can put different dies in here. I can put up to a three inch radius die. And you ask, well, what do you need a die like that for? Well, it makes really cool stands because you can bend the corners and that radius gives so much strength to um, stands like that. You can see it here on this lathe, but that's actually all cast, but you get the idea. So I'm really looking forward to working on this machine. Now, it needs to be completely overhauled. Okay, guys, I know that right now. There's things I want to do for it. You know, when this, when this leaf comes up, I want to put some sort of safety cage on it. I also want to put in different types of hydraulic switches or pneumatic switches. These here are all mechanical. I, of course, want to go over to some sort of electrical switch. If I wanted to, I can have a, a control box. I can have it on a stand if I'm working on big sheets out here. Or I can take that control box and I can put it right on the new safety rail and operate this with ease. Because the foot switch, even though it does work, it's, you know, I have to be off balance for a few seconds and I don't like that it's not safe. And I know you safety Nazis want me to be safe. Some of the other interesting things on the pneumatics is the cylinders are driven in both directions. And that's because of the hydraulics or the pneumatics levers. So it pushes in and pushes back. And that gives you control to make it move in and out softer. I've got um, volume vol valves here, I'll call them. Because I can control the volume of air. So I can have the pressure way up. But I can have the air cylinders fill up slow, but still with that high pressure to make this a safer unit. And there's a lot of other things I want to do. Of course, you know, I want to strip the whole thing down. Um, this is all ran with needle bearings, which is also rare. Usually they're just bushings, but this is an industrial machine. So that it has needle bearings takes away a lot of the friction, making this work better. But I want to see what condition they're in. I also want to see what condition the races are in. Do they need to be updated, or are they OK for my needs? Well, there we go. Um, the Whitney Jess Jensen. Oh, you know, I forgot. I want to show you something. So let's see what it'll actually bend. This is 10 gauge sheet material, and it's about 18 inches across. Like I said, this is supposed to be a 14 gauge break. And it will do 10 gauge. So I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. I'm sure once I get it set up better, it'll actually bend that more efficiently. But it's just kind of fun, the possibilities. All right, you guys, if you like this, please give me some thumbs up. Also, check me out on Facebook. I'm at Dale Derry, Metal Tips and Tricks. 
on Facebook, you would have already seen this. So think about that. I try to give you something a little more unique on my Facebook account than I do on my YouTube. All right, you guys, until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.